Well, Robin, we finally made it out to the construction site. We did. Uh-huh. Now we can get ready to use this gauge. Um, I've heard the first thing that we need to do is take a standard count. Yes. Is that correct? And it what is. does that do? Well, it really tells us that the gauge is working correctly, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, does the same thing as when you take a measurement with the gauge. It's counting, but it's sitting on the, a block that's paired with the gauge, and the source okay. is tucked up inside, so it's just accounting for uh, the performance, the function of the gauge itself, okay? Gotcha. Okay, so why do I need to take this, and like how often? Okay, so three main reasons why uh, diagnosis any problems, any failed components in the gauge. Mm -hmm. That'll definitely show up in the standard count. Um, not too common, but it can happen is background influences like excess humidity or excess background radiation okay. counts for that. But the main reason is the natural decay of the sources that's happening. Mm -hmm. So we have to account for that um, in our measurement counts and the standard count accounts for that every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. We want to do it at least once a day. More than that is perfectly fine. Do it at the job site, okay, so that you can account for anything in the background. And you want to warm up the gauge at least 10 minutes before you do your standard count, okay? Follow the rules in the manual, okay? Got it right here. Okay, they're very simple, really. Just make sure there's no other gauges within 30 feet. Okay. Make sure you're not close to any large vertical objects. Within six feet is our recommendation, mm -hmm. like your truck or construction equipment or something like that. Sure. Position it correctly on the block, so you want to have it sitting in contact with the block with the keypad end against the metal plate. Okay, you want to have a clean and dry standard block and you want to make sure that the standard block is on a smooth, dry, compacted material with at least a density of at least 100 pounds per cubic foot, which would be any soil, asphalt, aggregate, anything like that. Okay, a um, couple more tips. Make sure your handle is in the safe or standard count position. Um, tap down on the handle right before you start that standard count. That way you know it's seated in the notch. And step back about three feet before, or right after you start that standard count so that you're not influencing the count. Okay? Okay. Um, all right, so now I got my results. Mm -hmm. What should I do with them then? Right, so you wanna make sure you have good standard count results. So what does that mean? That's a common mm -hmm. question I get. Most of the gauges will tell you if it's passing or failing. And that's a pretty good indicator, especially if you're the only one using that gauge and you know that the uh, standard counts stored in the memory are reliable, okay? So if you have good standard counts stored in the memory, uh, it will tell you if the density standard is within plus or minus 1%, so that means the new one today is less than 1% from the average of the last four, that's passing. For the moisture system, if today's standard is within 2% of the average of the last four, that's passing. So that works pretty well, but if you have any doubt whatsoever, refer back to the calibration report. That'll tell you for sure what those counts should be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the golden rule is the, the calibration report. Okay. okay. All right. So if I get that right, <clears throat> every day I take a measurement. Yes. I write it down in my log. Definitely. And mm -hmm. if it's close, um, it should be good, yep. but if I want to make sure, I should check the calibration report. Right, yeah, they shouldn't vary much from day okay. to day, and the only way you're going to know that long term is to keep that standard count logbook, and that way you can see last week's and last month's counts and make sure that there's no big shifts or jumps in those counts, so very good. Okay, so just remember, if you can't get a good standard count, you're not going to get good measurement counts in the field, so always be sure to have good standards that are comparable to the ones on your calibration report or consistent with those in your logbook. Okay. Okay. So now that we got the standard count, I'm ready to use this guy, right? Yes, you are. Well, next time, next video, we will uh, go through the steps of how to properly use the gauge. In the meantime, let's go through a couple of troubleshooting questions that we've gotten since our last video. Real quick, um, sometimes with the older gauges, you'll have the keypad lockup. What should you do? Well, we recommend holding down the off key for 15 to 30 seconds. If that doesn't turn the gauge off, last resort is to open up the keypad, take off, uh, undo the four screws and lift up the keypad and unplug the ribbon cable. Wait a couple seconds, plug it back in, let the gauge go through its warm up and countdown. Of course, close the keypad tightly in the meantime. If that doesn't resolve it or it locks up often, then you'll want to have it serviced. But only open the keypad up in a clean environment, not out in the job site where dirt can get inside the gauge. Another thing that does happen sometimes with these type of gauges, the 3440s with the exposed depth strip, is sometimes it will give you an incorrect depth reading. So if you lower it to 10 inches and it says that's at 8 or something along those lines, then you'll want to do one of two things. Uh, first thing is to calibrate the depth strip, which is pressing shift and 2, which says depth. Choose calibrate. If that doesn't resolve it, then you'll want to go to manual mode, which is in that same menu. You can use it in manual mode until you can get the gauge serviced and the depth strip replaced. 
Okay, if you have any questions or comments, please email us at marketing at troxlerlabs.com or call us at 877-TROXLER or visit our website at www.troxlerlabs.com. Thank you.